Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma and Brian E. Roach. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. My name is Joe Kuzma, and over to my side, indistinguishable, who is that masked man that's over there? A ninja, one of the villains from Indiana Jones, or Raiders of the Lost Ark, or, yeah, you finally have to, oh, he's going to take it off. He's only taking the mask off of one Brian E. Roach because he's probably boiling in that thing. <laughs> it was very warm. He had the whole baklava thing going. Brian, uh, aside from now... Um, being a little toasty, how you doing, my friend? You look a little red. <laughs> it it was hot in there. It was, this is, I mean, it's nice, but it was very warm in here. Uh, and uh, other than that, I'm 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 having a good day, man. How you having a good day? I'm 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 doing pretty good, man. Uh, I got the Steelers mug. I got my coffee here finally, and uh, you know, I always struggle with. I'm hoping I don't ever slurp, and I've done it once, and somebody was like, oh, that's so gross, and it's like, I watch people like Jimmy Fallon and that, and they always have the, the mugs out. I know some of it's for show and self-promotion, but they drink out of the things. Everybody needs to wet their whistle every now and then, so especially when we uh, chatterbox over here. Hey, Steelers are doing some stuff, man, some free agency stuff. Um when were we last on the horn here? Because last time we were talking, we we're all remember we talked about being a, like the broken clock is right twice a day. We hit yep. on a couple of these. We forgot one guy, though, uh, out of this free agents list. But uh, before you did the ninja thing, I was going to say that I'm the pod father. And I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. Or you can refuse if you're Juju Smith-Schuster, apparently. <laughs> I got the jersey on right now. Um, yes, you do. We That's the one where we were most certainly uh, banging the drum on, and it happened, and he's – He's not backing up the Brinks truck, nor or anyone uh, not named Kenny Galladay, basically. Uh, yeah. There's a couple stupid deals out there. Like I said, Nelson Aguilar, and for whatever reason, the Patriots have wanted, wanted Kendrick Bourne. They've been trying to trade for him. Now they finally sign him. I, I kind of thought Juju would be like the kind of guy, a uh, real gritty slot receiver. Ma imagine him in that um, – you know, Josh McDaniels type system. I guess without Tom Brady, maybe they don't lean on a Wes Welker, or Julian Edelman type as much. But I was kind of like, man, it would have sucked. But I, I said the same thing with James Conner. I'm like, those are the kind of guys I would think the Patriots would hang their hat on. But I don't know. They went after those guys. Juju apparently offered an uh, incentive laden deal by the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, whatever incentives you get for the running back that's the quarterback. <laughs> uh, I hate saying that again. I said I respect Lamar Jackson. They just don't throw the ball. That's just the system. The system's to run it. Uh, you know, yep. and it plays to his strength. He's fast. Uh, so Juju would probably not get a whole lot of those incentive unless it was like thirty receptions and you get an extra five hundred k or something. I don't know. He he probably wasn't going to achieve that. But I guess he also turned down the Chiefs who. How do they even have money? I, I they're, wow. they're pursuing. I, I get that they cut both their tackles. Offensive line's not important. Just ask the Bengals. Ask the Steelers yeah. last year. Um, well, the Bengals they, they just got the Ry Riley uh, Reef. Riley uh, Reef. Yeah, I would I would have liked him, but I knew he was going to come with a price tag. So it's like I don't even bother mentioning some of the names. Although, hey, you know one that just hit the wire based on that. The Bengals are they're. The earth's moving a little bit. We'll come back to Juju. Just Well, we'll come back to this. Let's stay with Juju for a second. Um, so he turned down uh, he turned down the, this year ago Super Bowl champions and runners up and uh, playing with Patrick Mahomes and that, and he loves the city of Pittsburgh. So it's genuine, folks. I mean, this is a guy. Everybody, he got a lot of guilt by association from the previous regime. The Le'Veon Bells, the Antonio Browns, and that. And it wasn't – I never thought it was fair. He's in a different generation than you or I with the TikTok stuff, so I don't try and criticize that. It's not my cup of tea. I just don't have time for it. He's a professional right. football player. He has some downtime because he's probably just sitting in a room locked up COVID protocols. You know what I mean? What else uh, – video games and that. What else are you going to do? You know what I mean? That's what the kids do, though. That's You know, I, I still play some video games. I just don't do the TikTok. But anyways, Juju's back. It's only a one-year deal. I think it'll part lay into something bigger, whether it's with the Steelers beyond this or later. But uh, he's back, and I'm excited about it. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about it last time around uh, that, you know, it might become a possibility because the market was soft. Um, he did turn down 
more money from the, from those other two teams. But, you know, when you think about it, was either one of them really a good fit? As you said, the Ravens, no, they don't. I mean, they could use Juju because he can block, but that's not what's going to get him paid later. Um, and the Chiefs, he's going to be what? Like the third, maybe, guy that they look at? Um, yeah. You know, at best. Hill and uh, Kelsey. Kelsey and, and yeah, and Hill. Um, you know, I think all things being equal, uh, you know, the Steelers have figured out a way to get the money that would keep him here. And, and you know, all reports were it only took it like, what, about a half a million dollars difference between what they originally offered and what he eventually settled for. Um, they structured it in such a way that it, it almost has no cap impact for them this year. Uh, pushing it down the road. They've got voidable con- years in the contract. He's got a big signing bonus, so he gets a big chunk of change right now. It, it, you know, They made it work in, in such a way that this is kind of uh, a deal that allows Juju, if he has a tremendous year again with Ben, uh, to go out and, and try and make book again or for the Steelers to figure out a way to extend him when they no longer have cap difficulties as we've talked about, you know, next year where they can maybe pay the guy, um, you know, it does put him in a bit of rarefied air as only Heinz Warden and, uh, you know, Mr. Big Checks uh, ever got second contracts as Steelers receivers. Um, and, and we'll see how that goes. I, there's nothing to complain about here, right? It, that, that's the thing is, is everybody's losing their mind. And, and you know why, because of, uh, <laughs> of, you know, the TikTok stuff and the, and the immaturity stuff. And now they've, they've added on to that. Oh, 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 well, the only reason they, they, they chose to keep him instead of Steven Nelson. No, no they really did. They really did. Yeah, um, that's a, that's a, that's, that's a tough, what's going on bull, there? I don't think anybody bull, knows. It's a bull crap reason. Uh, it's, it's, it, you don't have enough details to say they had an either or there. First of all, you know, they, they let Steven Nelson go out and look for a trade. And ye, his tweet from today, ye, maybe he found one. We'll see. Uh, I don't know what ye means. Uh, if it was yay, I would know better. But ye. I, I know yeet. I, we were talking about yeah, it. That's a lit yeah. word that the kid uses. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what that is. But there's no T on this okay. unless he missed, unless he left yeet. the T off accidentally. You, you, would, you would yeet him to another city. Maybe he yeeted. Maybe he was going yeet. I don't, I don't know. I don't I, and I don't either. want the glove to leave, but, you know, as it is, you know, it, look, it, it just the way it works, you know, turnover is, is inevitable. I'm sure that they were not going to pay Steven Nelson a big contract again, and his, his contract was going to be up after this year. He probably wanted an extension. They probably weren't going to offer him one uh, at the rate that he thought he deserved. Um, stuff happened. So, you know, they, they made it, they let him go out and seek what he could seek. We'll see if it, if it works out. I'm not going to, I'm to be honest. I, I like, you know, I like Steven Nelson. We've been on, the, we've been on the Steven Nelson jock train <laughs> since he got here. The glove is, is, is awesome. I like the glove. Uh, he's played very well for the Steelers. Uh, but if, if, you know, it's time to move on, it's time to move on. And, and maybe it's, you know, St. Pierre or not St. Pierre, just Pierre, right? St. Pierre was the James, quarterback. Guy. Uh, well, yeah, Brian St. Pierre, man, that's going back. Yeah. And he only played like, yeah. uh, and that, he didn't even 30, play 30 was, half of the seconds. He's on the in, roster in, for a yeah. season, I think. That's a, that's yeah. a throwback there, man. So is Alex Van Pelt. Most people didn't even realize. Well, he yeah. was interim coach with the Browns there. He had spent a minute with the Steelers, and most people don't remember that. Uh, uh, James, yeah, I think it is just James. You got me thrown off. Yeah, J- I I'm like when Pierre. I type this in in the search here, and it comes up. It says James Pierre, football player. Football <laughs> such player. A, such an elegant uh, – elegant title no um between you know, him lane and and uh uh cam sutton you know look they, they've got they've got some options so if if it works out does it throw cornerback into the draft mix probably but it was probably there anyway yeah oh yeah so. yeah almost every year well no um they feel comfortable about wh- whoever else they have behind there yeah and uh, you know the juju thing it's probably people are going to say it's been influenced or whatever i think the steven nelson thing you hit the nail on the head we had talked maybe we didn't talk about it but i know we talked about it a lot in the back rooms we had discussed ways to find money with the cap before right and two of the higher paid guys are both of the corners 
So who are you going to? Or we we speculated at age thirty one, going on thirty two, not thirty three or thirty four, like some of these bozos in the Facebook groups. Uh, it'd be great if this guy actually listened to this show. I guarantee he doesn't because his takes are so awful that uh, <laughs> there's no way he would ever listen to something. Because most of the time you're like, oh, you know what? You're going to take a little bit of this idea, that idea, or whatever. And actually, I got something I'm going to take from The Flash later uh, in this show. You may have already seen it. But anyways, we had speculated if Joe Hayden could be released and they get some of that money. And then others were starting to bring up Steven Nelson. I was like, nah, no way, man. He's younger. Uh, he's solid. He's been playing as well as Stefan Gilmore, but we still know that's a contract year for both of these guys. And in order yeah. to get anything done, you can't restructure. You have to extend, and you may have hit the nail on the head. Uh, there may be money on the table there that he believes playing at such a high level, and maybe the Steelers, uh, they can't do it. <laughs> See, I really don't know what's going on into the future, but they're not going to be able to pay it now. So uh, right. it's all about now. This is the, the not for long league. So it's now for the most part. The, the juju thing is rare, as you said, rare air. Not only with the second contract, but a player, you know, basically taking. Uh, everybody wants the hometown discount. This is the hometown discount guy right here. Okay, so be happy. Uh, be happy. And uh, a lot of people are like, well, he's not a wide receiver one. Uh, He's put up those numbers. Okay, yeah, he had Antonio Brown over there. He also has Chase Claypool, Deontay Johnson on this roster too. It's still possible to really unleash and unload if there's some offensive play calling that isn't so darn predictable and other guys don't drop the ball, which Juju we know can catch the ball, so that's the guy you want to sign. But on the other hand here with Steven Nelson, um, yeah, if he's going to go get paid somewhere else and you're potentially thinking about releasing him, why not see if you can get something for him? I mean, all you, if it's even just the fifth round pick and then you save this contract, you get an extra draft pick. So be it. I mean, I, I don't think a lot of people have like this illusion too that it's like, oh, you're going to get first and second round picks. That's not the way these teams work. I mean, they'll just wait for this guy to get released or whatever. We'll see what ends up happening. But Cam Sutton, in my mind, was a signing that was made for long term and maybe even uh, shorter term. If Nelson goes, he could play on the outside. So uh, he's been capable. I, I've always been – I've been fixated on the whole Mike Hilton thing, which I think is a little uh, – maybe overblown in my head. Maybe they can have Justin Lane play there. I, typically, Justin Lane's been bumping out, though, whenever he's been on the field. So yeah. he's playing on the numbers. Um, I don't know about James Pierre. Maybe a, a to-be-determined player that has yet uh, a street free agent that's hanging around there, another team's cut, you never know. Who was the guy? Uh, Miles um, – uh, no, uh, Brandon Boykin. That, remember, they made yep. that trade. I, I know it didn't really work out, but that's the more on the player, I think, than the, than the team and trying to do something to you know fit a need there. I, I, I tend to forget about Marcus Allen. He went over from safety to inside linebacker, and maybe this is a guy that finds himself – these dimebacker-type roles. I understand you're going to want a nickel-type guy. They may even find a, a hybrid-type linebacker in the draft. They're already looking at some guys. We've been speculating about what they do there. They may add an inside linebacker still. Uh, they, you know, I don't know about edge, but they could go there too. But we've seen how inside linebacker depth has just destroyed this team. 2017's team uh, when Shazier went down and uh, Matikevich went down. That was the backup. They had to go three deep. They had to go three deep again. I mean, it was uh, Bush and then Spillane goes down. They trade for Avery Williamson and it just that wasn't something that worked out. So, I mean, they've tried. It's not from lack of trying or lack of preparation. How many teams can go three deep and still maintain a certain, you know, performance on the field? So, um, I didn't think they'd be tooling too much with the defense, but if we're doing this a year or so early, Brian, so be it. I mean, just get on with it, and they'll get another draft pick. And um, unfortunately, he's not an unrestricted free agent that would be in the compensatory type rules either, because they would just be releasing him. So, uh, unless they can get something, uh, yeah, you know, I'd rather just I mean, they get get something, get something from somebody. Something. I don't care if it's a seventh. I mean, at least it's better than nothing. Yeah, you know, uh, but uh, you know. It does show you because it, 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 it's, here's <laughs> Six, the crazy. I don't stuff. want seven round picks, man. The seventh round picks. You keep those. <laughs> the only reason you trade for Steven Nelson at this point is because you don't want to go into a bidding war to get him mm -hmm. right when he's released. That's the reason you offer up a trade. So you can put together a deal that he's willing to accept. Right. And he's willing to okay this and say, yes, I'm going to come there and you're going to extend me. And that's what we're going to do. 
Uh, so he's happy, but he avoids, you know, overall free agency. The question is, how much value does Steven Nelson really have out there uh, in the world? And, and how much is it depreciated because they know he's going to get released if they can't find a trade partner? I don't know. Uh, his cap number is 14-4. He has a dead cap of 8-2 uh, for this season. And he is currently the fourth if they highest trade him, paid, paid If player. they trade him, is that dead cap number still there? Uh, that's a great question, and I can't answer that. Uh, I, I think it depends on how much of this – it depends on the type of bonuses and stuff and, and guaranteed yeah. money, prorated. Let me see. They have a prorated bonus here of 6-1, so I kind of doubt it here. Um, cash due 2021. So I, 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 you know, that's a great question. Uh, eight, 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 two is his base salary. So I'm going to assume that that was maybe part I'm trying to see here and it doesn't actually say the contract that he signed, which is odd for over the cap.com. And I have this smacking me right in the face, but anyways, we'll come, we'll boomerang back around to that because I'm drawing a brain fart uh, as to how some of that works um I mean many times we hear somebody gets released and then it's a bargain to just go sign them because the other team still owes them like 10 million dollars so they don't need to go and sign a 12 million dollar contract uh they can just sign a 2 million and still make their 12 for the year like they were planning on it so uh so I think that all has to do with what was signing bonuses and what's in the Steelers really don't have a lot of that that they do a lot of that but they might not have been as front loaded in this case because they have been playing uh funny numbers with the cap for a while yeah. <laughs> a lot of these are more back loaded uh Ben uh Joe Hayden Stefan to are the three above Steven Nelson right now and then David DeCastro is right behind him believe it or not TJ Watt just by virtue of the fifth year option is the next guy on that list followed by Eric Ebron Cam Hayward and then Devin Bush so when you always say hey go grab this guy in the first round a lot of those Con contracts are um, comparable on a rookie scale, but still higher based on whatever position that they're playing too. So that's kind yeah. of always an interesting thing as Minka starts to crawl up this list as well. And yeah, I'm seeing Juju's paltry number there. It's just, it's still amazing to me. Uh, no, I'm not talking a really long time. <laughs> I'm not talking a long time. I was you asked me a question and I'm answering it for you. This isn't just one of my rambling rants here. So I just wanted to mess with you. Yeah. It's Brian shown on the screen. I'm talking a long time. He's going to start saying that now because somebody made a comment about it. And uh, there are people who said they could listen to me for a full straight hour without you, Brian. So I, I believe that God bless them. <laughs> I believe that they can God bless them. But the offer, the, the, the still going back the offer, you can't refuse. Um, so that kind of, I guess that puts a bow on Juju Nelson. We're talking about Sutton. I'm going to try to figure out maybe Marcus Allen. I, I think he's still in the linebacker mix. We talk about inside linebackers. Right now, you've got Devin Bush coming back. Robert Spillane was a restricted free agent. Uh, Ulysses Gilbert has been unable to stay healthy but still under a rookie contract. Marcus Allen was also a restricted uh, free agent as well. I believe that was tendered or re-signed. And then um, uh, Miles Killebrew. So here's our next guy. Came into the league as a safety. Um, got switched over to linebacker with Matt Patricia going to the Lions and seems to be a, uh, a heck of a special teams demon and maybe yep. some depth there as another guy that could roam around. We're talking about these guys in the middle of the field that could match up on running backs and tight ends and maybe a, the occasional wide receiver. Not T.J. Watt. We don't want to see that. <laughs> but maybe Miles Killebrew, he's like another, another. I can't even see your whole screen over there. I got my... <laughs> water like right in front of the corner so when you're typing smoochy it, smoochy to me I, I said i love you joe smoochy smoochy smooch <laughs> yeah i couldn't see all that you could be typing cuss words and then i gotta go back no, and edit it out don't do that i would Get do that I youtube would do that. youtube frowns strongly upon i i would not i wouldn't i only cussed once in how many years we've been doing this i only I cussed know. once i still have it in my files it says brian beep because <laughs> <laughs> that's what i named it in order to get the, some of your expletives off of there um Man, you got me. Miles Killebrew, can yes. he fill in a role still maybe playing a quarter of the snaps or so as potentially like a dimebacker? I know it's going to make you cringe or some people cringe to mention Mark Barron, but that's the reason they brought Mark Barron in like that. And stealing, this is what I was stealing from the Zacadonia, the, the ZE Flash on Twitter. Uh, he had mentioned it, and he stole it from somewhere else, so it's borrowed twice over at least. Um, so the original idea would have been great, but – 
uh, Killebrew's original defensive coordinator up in Detroit is here with Pittsburgh and uh, Terrell Austin. So uh, I, I, I like this. And he got a pretty healthy contract, too. Most people don't realize special teams guys still get paid. This, oh, yeah. fill, this also fills in for the loss of uh, Ola Adenei. Yes. I think, uh, I mean, you know, it's hard to get really pumped about some of these secondary signings, but I actually, yeah, I was <laughs> pretty teams excited about get the this love. one. Yeah. Um, only because I think he, you know, he's, he's a cog that can be used in more than just special teams. We'll see. We mm -hmm. say that, you know, and then, and then the Steelers really focus them just on special teams and they never do anything else. Uh, but there's potential there. Uh, so I, I like that. Plus he, as you said, he is just a special teams demon. Um, so, you know, that, Anything that improves our special teams, I think, is a good move, uh, especially, especially we, you know, with Ola moving on, which which is not tremendously surprising. Um, you know, to be quite honest, he didn't show a lot, and once Highsmith got here, he couldn't get snaps in in the starting defense. So, you know, it's not surprising he wanted to go someplace where maybe he would have that opportunity. Um, so we'll see what happens with him in, in Tennessee, but. Uh, they they also I can't remember the name of the the O lineman that they signed. Uh, and, Joe Haig. Uh, yeah, Joe Haig. I'm not I'm not I'm not angry. I ain't, I ain't mad about that signing either. Um, may not turn into anything, uh, but I think it's a good depth signing. I think it's a nice uh, a nice additional piece uh, there. And then uh, you know it's 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 all it's all good. And and who's the guy that they they signed off of a pro day? Uh, I'm very intrigued by that. The wide receiver that they, they went down to, what was it? Auburn's pro day and Colbert, uh, Kevin Colbert said, Hey, here's a contract, dude. <laughs> Tyler Simmons. Tyler uh, Simmons. Yeah. Was was that Auburn or was it Georgia? I don't remember which, whatever or it was, which he played for. Yeah. What a great story that is. That, that actually leaked days ago that there was a phone yeah. call after that. So I guess, um, he went on drafted last year. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, Georgia, uh, Georgia receiver. So the, um, the story on that was, uh, Kevin Colbert and company go down to the pro day and he's still working out and, and this isn't unusual. You got some guys that are still trying to get in the league. They might work out or there might not be enough bodies with the current, uh, regime that's there and caught his eye and, uh, offered a contract, probably not much more than the guy that's going to be developmental at this point practice squad guy because all of the wide receivers are coming back and we're still thinking they may even draft one it would be a rare year if they do not and they don't and really they, they don't have to with the stable they, of guys they really they don't I, I i'm i'm like where where are they going to draft them at this point it, <laughs> i i mean it's one of those things if if the if the value is there right second third I can't imagine it's not going to be the first round. If they draft a wide receiver in the first round, I think that there will be riots in the street. Um, but second, third round, if the value is there, sure, maybe they pull the trigger. But I, I to be quite honest, they don't need to draft a as you said, they don't need it. Don't need it. Yeah, um, that's the same way I feel. Like there were folks that wanted Philip Lindsay as soon as he hit the wire. Were we talking about this the other day? Even the the tie up any kind of money in any free agent, then you're not drafting a running back unless you're cutting somebody else that, and, and then you're wasting a draft pick. Uh, if it's Dre Archer, then okay. That's probably <laughs> something that you're going to do. But uh, I mean, why, why, why you bring that up? Why do you gotta, why do you gotta bring that one up? That's like uh, the, the, the penultimate miss of, of their wide receiver group. It's like, that's the key. Oh, Dre Archer. He's so fast. No, he's a little scat back type <laughs> running back slash wide receiver. Supposed to be Jack of all trades. No, Lima Swede was the swing and miss second round. Yeah, pick. He, sw uh, he, he was a definite swing and miss. Yeah, and, and it happens, you know, uh, Ziggy Hood just wasn't a fit. And Ziggy Hood ends up having a pretty long uh, NFL career. He may even still be yep. hanging around. I'd have to look him up. Um, I, I was going to mention a few things. Let me see. Miles Killebrew. Um Kind of, I'd say he might have went more by the wayside as Matt Patricia took over and started to try and do his Patriot way type crap. Uh, not not a whole lot that's here as far as like his playing time or anything else that you could really break down. But um, I guarantee that uh, Terrell Austin had uh, some say on what it, what he was doing because 
He played like no defensive snaps last year at all. Let me see. I'm going to go back a little more. Uh, he filled in a little bit in 2019. I'm trying to see how much of us the role player, mostly special teams still here. Uh, going back to when he was more of a rookie. Yeah, so his first two years in the league, which kind of almost coincides with that change, uh, he played a lot more. So he's at least got some experience and can bring some type of uh, veteran experience plus the special team stuff to, uh, to the Steelers. We're talking wide receivers just to go through that now at the end of Juju. It's still Deontay Johnson, James Washington, Chase Claypool, and Ray Ray McLeod all sitting there. So that, that's a, that's very top heavy, in my opinion. Uh, we mentioned there was something else that I was bringing up. We already talked Stephen Nelson's money. Uh, oh, Juju and the Ravens and the incentives for contract, right? So the top wide receivers for the uh, Baltimore Rapids last year, uh, Mark Andrews, and now I got to look up who the other one was. But the total number or total number of receptions, Brian. Um, Within within the nearest dollar, sir, <laughs> like a game show question. Are you gonna look it up and cheat? No, I'm not. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess, and if I'm wrong, I'm gonna be shamefaced. Uh, but let's see, seventy four. Doom doom doom. <laughs> you went over. You went over. Um, ah. So uh, 74, you were over by quite a bit. It was 58, and it was Hollywood uh, Marquise Brown tied with Mark Andrews, 58 apiece. Willie Sneed had 33. Devin uh, Dervinay had 20. Miles Boykin had a whopping 19, appeared in all the games and started 13 of them. Uh, just one more reception than J.K. Dobbins. And Ouch. you wonder why, aside from maybe some pride for wearing this jersey, black and gold, maybe he turned them down for that reason. Again, some second fiddle stuff. Uh, I mean, and and everyone's going to say, well, Juju, what did Juju do? Well, he led the Steelers in receptions with 97. He was almost a 100-catch yeah. guy. He didn't re lead in yards. He was third in yards with 831, uh, tied for tops with receiving touchdowns at nine because he did the dirty work. And uh, that's the kind of guy you need on your team. He's, he's really, you think about it, between the contract and and not being a uh, a stats whore for lack of better terms uh he's a selfless guy i mean so i'll stop with juju because there's going to be all kind of people maybe i don't know i don't know how people are jumping around on that what are well, there they're definitely two two camps there are definitely two camps they're the I, I guess they call themselves juju bees now they're the they're the guy the people who love juju and then there's people who hate juju uh i'm going to call them mark madden acolytes <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and by the way, I'm st I, I know he doesn't listen. I don't care if one of his little trolls listens. I'm still willing to fight him. I will fight him. I will give all of the pay-per-view money to charity. I don't want to die. I just want to kick his ass. That's all. <laughs> no comment. This this uh, statement by Brian uh, is not endorsed by myself or Steel City Underground. <laughs> I will fight you. <laughs> but... I was trying to think. Was Zach Banner already signed when we talked last, or we were talking we, about? We, I think we knew he was going to be signed. I don't think. They yeah, I think the, signed it. it officially hit on the 18th, which is when both of those shows uh, landed. 319 Juju's number there, so yeah. uh, that ended up being Juju Day. <laughs> the the irony of that. Uh, but Zach Banner, we we're talking about. Well, I guess Joe Haig isn't actually listed on here, even though they made the announcement. It's not on the transaction wire officially with the Steelers here. I'm looking right here at their uh, website. Uh, maybe that's paperwork that still needs processed with the league uh, because Chris be. Chris Warmly just went through yesterday, and we're going to talk about yep. that too. We talked Tyler Simmons. We talked Cam, oh, well, Cam Sutton uh, happened. Uh, well, it happened before that announced, but it landed on the 20th, two days after we dropped the show. So it, I'm all up in the air, but I think with, with Haig, uh, Chooksakora 4, and Banner, and then you're probably going to draft some uh, a, a couple linemen too, B.J. Finney, all this other stuff, I, I think they're in pretty good shape there to have a mix of guys that compete at camp and find out what the best formula is there. Uh, won't hammer that too much more. We still got to do an O-line show. Uh, we got a lot of meat to chew off of that bone. Uh, Chris oh, yeah. Wormley, a lot of people were saying why. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to backpedal on this one. Uh, and we didn't talk about him really at all. And before I get into Wormley, I still think they could improve here at, at a defensive tackle position. I like the uh, the guy was in the system, short period of time. Yep. 
he was hurt. Yep. Didn't get on the field a lot because he was hurt. Uh, yep. But he still practices, and the coaches see what he does in practice, and that gives them an impression that we'll never have because we don't get to see the same stuff. Yeah. So I will reserve judgment on that. However, I still think they could draft someone, and it doesn't have to be anybody high, a high round pick. I'll tell you who I really wanted. This is what I was starting to say at the beginning of the show, and I, I cut myself off. I saw the Bengals cut Geno Atkins, yes, and that one was very interesting. We were discussing a little on Twitter. And I said, man, if you had the money to be able to bring that guy in, and I understand he had maybe a banged up shoulder, but some of the some of the uh, speak that was coming out of Cincinnati on their local radio programming and stuff too was it was a mystery as to why the guy was inactive or on the sidelines or not being utilized in some of these cases last season. And I think it was part of uh, Carlos Dunlap's reason for getting out of town as well and being a trade target. He wanted to get out. Uh, they were not fielding anything for Geno Atkins for whatever reason that may have been. So from my hearsay and recollection there, take that as you will, maybe with a grain of salt. But Geno, we were talking about Tyson Alou and he was what, like 33 years old, going on 34, and we said there's still a precedent for him to play a couple more years in Pittsburgh, even though now he will not. But right. you've got um, – Geno Atkins turns 33 here in less than a week on the 28th of March here. However, if you can get something out of this guy, this is an all pro kind of level guy when he's on and healthy. And when you don't have to use him for even 80% of the snaps, he plays like a quarter to a half a game. You throw him in there with Cam Hayward and Stefan to it. And, and not, and not to even mention TJ Watt and maybe whatever Alex Highsmith can become. Holy cow! Would that that would bring back a little bit of the thoughts of the big snack? I think, if that were a capable fit for the Steelers financially and whatever fit, maybe he wants to go somewhere and I don't know whoever else could be looking at filling some holes on their roster. Maybe he'll get more playing time. I don't know where the pride is there, and maybe he has the same kind of feeling like Juju. Oh, I'm not going to go play for the enemy. I hated these guys for all these years, lining up against them, whatever. <laughs> but on the same hand, you got guys like Joe Hayden that are more than welcome to come right over and stick it to their old team too, uh, within the same division. So that could be very. That would be something interesting. I, there's been no talk on that, and I don't think he's a guy that's going to get plucked right off the wire in any type of instant. But if he's still sitting there, and there's a little bit of chump change to throw his way, that's I, I would bend my ear to that one for sure, Brian. I'm not opposed to that. I, yeah. I think you're, you're absolutely right. If if he can, if he's a willing to fill that kind of Tyson Alualu role, where he's not going to get starting snaps, nor is he going to get starters money. He's not going to get the money he's used to getting, but he wants to play. That's the that's the real question. I mean, what he supposedly was battling last year was a shoulder injury. And for a defensive guy, especially a D-line guy, a shoulder injury is is problematic. Um, you know, we we know that from history. But you know, if if it if it really is more of a everybody hated being in Cincinnati kind of a thing, and he just <laughs> didn't want to play and they didn't know what to do with him. Uh, you know, look, I, I, I would assume Mike Tomlin is has they, they know Geno Atkins. There's no question about that. So if they think there's a, any any kind of a, a, a fit there, do I hate it? No, absolutely not. Do I think it's likely? Probably not. Um, but I, I'm just not sure why I think that. I haven't yet decided if I don't think it's likely because he's likely to get a big number because I don't think he's going to get a big number. No, out and and we talked about this earlier. He's uh, got a, still got a cap charge of five point two million from yeah. the Bengals, so he's uh, he's making five two to just sit on a you know sit in the sit around. Yeah, that, and and collect dust. So it is a possibility. Hey, um, you still have a chance to play here. We could offer you a few million, make up a little bit of difference. I mean, he's not going to make. Um, I don't know what his contract was specific this year. I'm going to say, well, he uh, saved him nine and a half million on the. Cap, well, so. yes, he was he was in a cap number of four last year, fourteen two, and paid eleven five for the cash. Uh, so I imagine he his cap number has been fourteen six and fifteen one the previous years over that. So he's he's been uh, since 2014 making at least nine to ten million dollars a season, and. It's, kind of a rich contract but it's the same thing it's like rookies start to get paid a little lesser and then some of these guys at the tail end maybe of their back end of their careers got to take a smaller deal as well because uh, 
you know, you got to prove that you still got something left in the tank. Nobody's going to throw a lot of money, specifically guaranteed money, your way. Right. Again, though, 33 years old, if somebody wanted to, I, I don't know. I, I did this search, and it was already saying, like, the Cowboys or the Saints or some. Uh, Saints ain't got no money. So the Saints would be in the same <laughs> same situation. Maybe the Cowboys do. They make all kind of ridiculous moves sometimes. Uh, so we'll find out, man. I mean, uh, I threw that out there, but Chris, going back to Chris Warmly, I like the signing. A lot of people were just like, oh, boo-hoo, just because they didn't get to see the guy. It's the same thing with kind of like Derek Watt and restructuring his contract. Why not just cut him? Because it would have cost more money to cut him than yeah. it would have to restructure and, and redo that deal. And, you know, in, injuries hamper guys sometimes. It's not his fault. You know, he gets hurt doing this job for the Steelers, right? It's not his fault. You think he wants to get back on the field? He ob- absolutely tried to a couple of times and just couldn't. It's just it doesn't work out that way sometimes. Uh, you know, na- Mother Nature's against you. So don't hold that against the, the, against the individual player. Let's see him healthy for a full year. Specifically, yep. a lot of people speculating on what he'll do in Matt Canada's offense. But Chris Warmly, I mean, after you lose a Lou Alou and all you have there is Isaiah Bugs and my cousin Brad, you're getting a shout-out on the show, buddy, for, for once. Um he says some preposterous things. <laughs> Apparently, he watches all of college football. He knows every single guy, including Tyler Simmons. I'm like, man, you just did a Google search on that. Shut up. Um, he he's in love with Carlos Davis. In love with Carlos Davis. So, I That's, mean, uh, hey, I, maybe, I, maybe. Yeah, there's been I, late round I, picks that have worked out. I don't know. I I don't dislike Carlos Davis, no. but I'm not I'm not in love. With, I'm not in love with Carlos Davis. Not yet. I don't know. That I got to lean on him, but. If you got to go to gotta camp, got to earn my love, my, my friend. Got to earn you, it. If you got to go to camp with Warmly, uh, some combination of Warmly, Bugs, and Davis, and figuring out which one of them is going to play about a quarter of the snaps, I could live I'm with that. I'm good with that. Yeah, I can live with that. Absolutely. Who was it? Was this the Flash too that we need to give a shout out to? Because he was talking about how Warmly looked pretty good right there at the tail end of the season when he finally got inserted in there and had some time to play. And he's not wrong. So. Right. You know, you're basing it on one or two games. But again, we're talking about practice and other things that we don't get to see. Again, don't hold it against the guy that's hurt. Uh, That's what I say. I think we've covered all the transactions since we last talked. Banner, Juju, uh, officially Cam Sutton on the books now. Tyler Simmons, a great story there. Again, I wonder, um, I know the league's going to meet and they're they're talking about, you know, the extra game now that they're going to throw in. Uh, you could flex Monday Night Football now. There's all kinds of crazy stuff that's going on. We'll be talking about that. Yeah, that's going to be terrible for travel or people that make plans, isn't it? You yeah. take like maybe one day off from work, and then all of a sudden the game gets moved from Sunday to Monday night. Uh, you you know you got to buy these tickets. Usually, you get your package in what June, July. You know yeah. you're already paying for it in like May or whatever. You're probably paying on it now. Maybe you're on a plan or something for it. You know what I mean? So uh, well, Steelers, you can't yet. I, yeah. I actually looked. I went in and looked to see if I had to make my first payment. But well, you can't. it's a yeah. It's well, it's, it's still an unusual set of circumstances surrounding yeah. how many fans are going to. Uh, we don't know those answers just yet. It's still a long ways away. But I'm just saying, in usual times, it's like you you want to buy a ticket and make plans. You're probably not doing that like a few days in advance. I know no. I have. I, I at least know yeah. I'm going to go, and then maybe I'll try and grab a cheap ticket or something like that. But you're still looking at hotel rooms and stuff like that because it all book up, and then you're staying in like you know the Monroeville Mall or wherever that they had uh, the uh, the Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> I've stayed there. I, well, not in the Monroeville Mall, no, but no, I stayed no, no, uh, no. some hotel out there, some Radisson. I stayed out there. <laughs> Oh, that's just pure torture. If you don't come in early enough through the tunnel, uh, oh, heading on a game day, oh, that Squirrel Hill. Oh, it's oh my goodness, yeah. Like, and you can't get around there either. Like, uh, it's because you're all landlocked with the river and and the mountains, and it's just, it's brutal. It's absolutely brutal. So some so if you ever some come... I, some hotel down in the down off the river. I stayed at one time. Not not where I like to stay. There's a residence in that's down from the stadium. That's where I like to stay. Okay. Uh, but they, you know, they triple up the prices on game day. Oh, baskets. they all do. They um, all do. Uh, the but, Sheridan uh, Station they, Square is notorious. Yeah, all um, I, I have, lo- I've loved the uh, Wyndham Grand that's right there uh, by uh, Point Park. So it's overlooking all three of the rivers. If you get one of the rooms that just look out over it, man, it's gorgeous. I've stayed there multiple times. Uh, another place that's a pain in the neck to get in and out of. And don't even ask for a shuttle on a game day. There's no way that the hotel's doing shuttle service uh, with all the Steelers fans. I mean, you can walk if you want to, but it's probably, you know, uh, 
grab your car and, and, or, you know, jump on the ferry or whatever be the case. So that's the cool thing from station square too. just take the boat right over, which I've never done. I should do that just once just to experience it. Cause I usually don't come in off of that end. I'm usually coming in off the Northern end, uh, or over from the West you're coming from the East. So Monroeville, Monroeville would make more sense for you than it would for me. It just really sucks trying to double back through and come through the tunnel. It's and pain. we have, it's a pain. We have totally sidebarred this, but I think, uh, the whole the whole point the whole point of this was uh you know there's a lot of things coming in the mix here uh just lots of news and we'll be covering some more soon we'll see if the Steelers have any more uh chump change sitting around uh, maybe we'll get a Steven Nelson trade news we'll we'll hear about that and i guess there's not much of um anything else you know our our buddy eric herman's also been back on social media after a little bit of a hiatus i gotta give this tweet a shot i out. saw him yeah, yeah i saw him so it's about your it's about your guy here he said he's been playing spider-man on playstation 5 and it's hard not to think of mark madden and juju when jay jonah jameson comes on calling spider-man a menace <laughs> <laughs> that's a perfect please, example if there ever was please one never ever call mark madden my guy <laughs> never never Okay, you're. you're <laughs> uh, it's almost like one of those questions. You're in a room with so and so, so and so, and Mark Madden. Who do you shoot and why? And it's like Mark Madden twice, you know. Or yeah, like, Mark Madden twice. Absolutely correct. <laughs> I was going to say day. like Neil O'Donnell, and you know, I don't know who else we would throw into that mix. Hitler or something. But... Stop. <laughs> uh, wow. <laughs> You, you might make it hard then. Jeez. <laughs> I've raised the bar I mean, a little bit. I, I, I little don't like bit. Mark Madden, but my God. He's Maybe he'll save a well. bullet. Local Hitler, I guess. I don't know. He's not killing anybody. <laughs> he just won't shut up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's still it's volatile stuff, though. The stuff it that is. he says, and it leaks over, and some of the fans go out and attack Juju's mom or whatever be the case. It's just it's preposterous and uncalled for. And uh, Yes, it is. You know, it's, it's fun. And some of these guys – I guarantee you, I still say this too. I guarantee you that maybe Mark Madden, the person, is a lot different than Mark Madden, the radio personality. He may as well just have uh, like a, a different type of stage name or something like that. It's kind of like, do you believe Matt Bourne's or not Matt Bourne? Uh, Matt Damon is out there as Jason Bourne killing people with a pencil. You know, that's the guy you see on the on, on the movie. That was John screen. Wick. John Jason Bourne didn't kill anybody with a pencil. John Wick did. Pencil <laughs> and a and a library book and a yes. library. That's pretty pretty badass. But it is. yeah, Keanu Reeves. I don't know, man. I've seen Keanu Reeves does his own stunts too. Check out those videos. So he has but, a comic book. Yeah, and he's Got, turning it into a movie. And and crazy. the main character looks just like Keanu Reeves, except jacked. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's all wild. But anyways, I I still think that he does a lot of it to get a rise out of people like you and me. And uh, unfortunately, sure. it does spill over, and he doesn't care because he's getting paid to do it. So absolutely, uh, absolutely. he's more like There's the no local Howard, St the sports Howard Stern sort of kind of shock jock that's what i would call it but digress we've wasted but, too much time on him already yeah please <laughs> uh anyways i was looking at a few of the comments too i think we should just mention a few as we wrap up this show um let me see a lot of people agree on the fire tomlin crowd uh there was someone that said uh we complain too much um i don't know it's oh yeah complain. But do we complain? Do we really complain? I, think I know I commented back nonsense. to that that yeah. particular user. Well, you said you like uh, complaining, so I you like, agreed. I do like to complain, but uh, I, I feel like it's not whiny complaining. I just like to point out things that are annoying. Uh, I, I, I remember know, I remember my last point. It was going to be about potential free agents that are still left. I think I'm going to leave it to the next show, but I'm just going to cut to the chase and say the big names that are out there, Jadavian Clowney, zero sacks last zero. year. Zero. Zero. And for the money the Steelers zero have, interest. it's probably all he's worth at this point. Yeah. Uh, Bud has been way better and more productive. Uh, Clowney got to get back on track with someone or he's going to be on the outside looking in if he isn't already. So yeah. I know there's a couple other names that are out there, guys, that are maybe getting uh, – Again, nearing the end of their career. We'll cover that next time. Brian, thanks for joining me once again, my friend. Um, let's try and uh, not call out people on the show or compare them to Hitler. <laughs> I wasn't comparing them to Hitler. I was just saying on your level of maybe hate or or disgust. No, I, like who I, do you who? Do, I don't hate Mark Madden as much. <laughs> I don't. I, I mean, no. I no no. I I don't actually hate Mark Madden. I just want to punch him in his face. Yeah, which is, <laughs> which is, I think, deserved. I think uh, that's a not good hate. Thing. 
It just needs to happen. That's all. Again, we're being entertaining. I wasn't trying to be shock jockish myself, but I guess I was. I was. I couldn't think of a name, man. I'm still drinking my coffee. Okay, the, it's all cut, good. cut it's me all some beautiful. slack. Cut me some slack. So, I've been in a fog. I, I, got, no I got a lot of things uh, going on here. I, no madness. No, no, no anger. I got no hostility towards anyone except Mark Madden, <laughs> and it's just because I, like I said, for some reason, some people just need to get punched in the face, and Mark Madden needs to get punched in the face. That's all. It's unfortunately social media kind of creates this type of environment, doesn't it? So it's just oh, see, I but wait, I, I'm old, I'm pre social media, and I will tell you, even beyond social media, there were people that you knew in your life before Twitter, before Instagram, before Facebook, who you met them, and after 10 minutes, you said, You need to be punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not, it's not. Just social media. It makes it worse. I will grant you that. It makes it worse. But there were always people who just needed to be punched in the face. And I guarantee you, Mark Madden has always been one of those people. <laughs> yeah, he probably gets away with a lot more than he should. I will say one thing for the local Pittsburgh sports media. 93.7 The Fan has uh, also just had a whole segment this morning that said, Steelers, Steelers fans, stop complaining. Juju coming back to the Steelers is a great thing. So... We're not the only ones. We're not the only ones. That's always good. But like I said, broken clock sometimes, right? It's great. We 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 knew the, we either got the banner thing right or knew that we missed Chris Wormley's whole thing. But Sutton was my top priority. Juju. If we said something like this too. The the four big guys, uh, Bud, Mike Hilton, Cam Sutton, and Juju. They were only going to keep two of them. And I said probably the way it worked into the cap. What did I say? Sutton and Juju. Those were the guys that I was fixated on. So I feel yeah. kind of, I feel good I, about I will, it. I will not give myself credit for Juju no. simply because I I expected him to get bank. Like yeah. really get bank because that's just the way wide receiver market had been and it just didn't work out. And once that happened, then it became a possibility. But uh for the folks out there who thought it was always predestined and that unfortunately that includes our, our boy Zacadonia. Uh, it was not always predestined, but there's just some, there was something weird going on. People didn't want to pay wide receivers. It's a change in the, a change in the weather, to quote uh, John Fogarty. Uh, and uh, you know, hey, I, I'm all I'm I'm I got nothing but love for the fact that it worked out that way. So yeah, me too. And I get to wear this another year too, and not look like yeah, a buffoon. So we'll see. James Conner's still floating around out there, and yeah, I just I, I'm I don't still see marking him my back. I, I, it's a, no. Well, I, I never say never. Again, the right deal, the right little amount of money, and the fact that there may be no interest from anyone else, maybe. Yeah, I just um, – nah, I, I don't know. I don't know. All right, my friend. They, they have to want to. That's, that's key. Yeah. <laughs> So once again, everyone out there, thanks for listening, supporting the program. Uh, give Brian a wave virtually here, and uh, we'll be back with some more news, hopefully sooner rather than later. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And my name's Joe, and his name's Brian. And no, he's not really a ninja. We encourage everyone out there until the next episode to – Okay. I am so a ninja. We want to tell everyone to be safe. And going and hiding and lurking in the shadows probably isn't safe, Mr. Ninja. So be safe, be good, and we'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com. 